This is the Acorn Electron, released in 1983. It was the bucketed version of the BBC Micro. I bought this system when I attended the February's Retro Games Fair in Leeds and was part of a deal which I was able to get which contained the Electron and the ZX Spectrum together for £50. This Electron is pretty dirty around the casing and the keyboard keys which will need to be cleaned and restored to its former glory. Carrying on the device, we are greeted with the power bleep and the OS on the screen, also known as Acorn MOS Basic. So, we know that the Electron works, but now it's time for the restoration. We flip the Electron over and unscrew the four Phillips head screws, holding the case together. Flipping the electron back over, we carefully lift the case holding the keyboard. We have to be careful as there's a ribbon cable attached to the main board, which we need to remove. With the top case off, we take a first look at the main board. Let's talk about what powers the Acorn Electron. The Electron is a cut down version of the BBC Micro. Its aim was to compete with the Spectrum machines in the UK, which were very popular. With a targeted release date of Christmas 1982, the system missed its launch due to the ULA chip not being completed in time and not entering the main production line. The Electron is powered by the SY6502A chip. It is a variation of the popular 6502 chip. The 6502 chip is an 8-bit CPU. And on the Electron, it has a variable clock speed. This chip is clocked at 2 MHz. However, the clock speed would drop to 1 MHz when accessing the ROM, and as low as 0.5 MHz when accessing RAM, depending on the graphics mode. The CPU and ULA have to take turns when accessing the RAM. The ULA, short for Uncommitted Logic Array, was designed so that multiple tasks can be performed on a single chip instead of multiple chips, which would increase costs on the machine. The ULA is in charge of sound generation, graphics output, tape data input and output, ROM paging, and the interrupts. The Electron has 32 kilobytes of dynamic RAM arranged in four 64 kilobit chips accessible over a four bit memory bus. This was slower to access than the competition, which often used 16 16 kilobit RAM chips accessible over an eight bit memory bus. And finally, this chip houses the 32 kilobytes of ROM for BBC Basic V2 and includes the new and improved version of Acorn MOS version 1.0. We're now going to unplug the speaker and the power from the main board and unscrew the four screws that are holding the main board and the three additional screws holding the power board. And with the screws removed, we can now remove the boards from the bottom case. To remove the speaker, I used a plastic splugger to separate the glue holding the speaker to the case. I used IPA to remove the stubborn dirt on the shell, which worked perfectly. Next, we turn our attention to the keyboard. We removed the five screws holding the keyboard with the top case, which will separate both parts. This keyboard is in real need of a clean, almost 40 years of dirt and grime built up. We need to remove the keys. To do that, I use this plastic splugger tool, which easily removes them without damaging the keys or the board. Mm. 
One by one, I remove each key. I give the keys a good soak in warm, soapy water before cleaning each key one by one. And then moving on to the Electron's top and bottom shells, scrubbing away all the old dirt in soap. And then washing them both in the shower. We will leave them to dry for a bit. We need to sort this strange white stuff around the keyboard connector. To remove it, I scrubbed it away with IPA and anti-static brush. And then soaked the main board with IPA to clean away all the old dirt and grime on both the main board and power board. Using the anti-static brush, I slowly removed all the dirt and grime from the keyboard. With the keyboard clean, shells now dried and looking fantastic, it's now the perfect time to reassemble the Electron. The keyboard looks absolutely fantastic and clean. With everything cleaned, it's now the perfect time to reassemble the Electron. And the final thing to clean is the speaker. And then fitting it back and connecting it to the Electron. And the final thing to connect is the cable ribbon cable to the main board. And with everything connected back up, we can finally screw the Electron back together one last time. And here is the final result. It is looking amazing. A once dirty Electron, sold for 25 pounds, now restored to its former glory. And here is the Electron turned on. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And until next time, Bye for now.